Hey there, it's Coach Tam, and today we are going to get you all set up with using your new meal plan. So what I will be doing is walking you through how to access your meal plan, um, how to get comfortable with it, how to make the different swaps that I talked to you about in our initial consultation, and then how you can set yourself up for success as you begin using this new meal plan. All right. So first of all, when I confirm that I have everything set up for you, you will receive an email from me. The sender will be follow my nutrition plan and the subject will be your nutrition plan. Now, because I use this uh, provider often, it is actually starred for me, which means it's in my important folder because this may be your first time receiving a meal plan from me. Uh, if you don't see it, go ahead and check your junk folder or your spam folder. Sometimes it ends up there. Okay, so you're looking for sender, follow my nutrition plan and subject your nutrition plan. All right. Once you locate this email, you'll want to click on the first link entitled view your meal plan. Now you will have to actually set up your account uh, with your username, which will be your email address, and you'll have to choose a password. Make sure that it's one that you are familiar with and that you can remember, okay? Once you set up your account, you will then come to a, a page that looks like this, all right? And if you click on this Manage Programs option, you will see your meal plan. Now, of course, I have a couple of different ones because I use this system often, but typically you will have just one meal plan and you'll click on the meal planning link. And then it will bring you to a page that looks like this, all right? So now you have your meal plan. You'll notice that it defaults to day one, but there are seven days in total, just like we talked about. So let's take a look at how these meal plans are set up. Well, first of all, uh, you will notice that there are suggested meal times. So each time the day starts at about 7 a.m. and then we eat every two to three hours. So our next meal is a snack at 11 a.m., lunch at 12, afternoon snack at three, dinner at six o'clock, and then one final snack a few hours before bed. Although your times may vary a little bit because I know everyone has different schedules, you want to mimic this flow so that you're eating every two to three hours, okay? All right, so let's take a look at how these meals are constructed. Well, first of all, you will notice that there are a balance of items. So we're not just eating one thing like a banana. Although uh, a lot of us have been taught that we should eat as little as possible, that's actually not true. We want to make sure that we're eating a meal that has the right mix of protein, fat, and carbohydrates. It's going to keep our blood pressure, uh, not blood pressure, our blood sugar levels stable, provide the nutrients that we need, um, and help ensure that we are able to stay focused and energetic throughout the day. So the great news is that these meal plans are set up to do just that. You'll also notice that within each meal total, it will list the total calories and a breakdown. These percentages are the percentages of carbs, protein, and fat. How do I know that? If you scroll down to the bottom, the key is here, calories, carbs, protein, fat, and fluid, okay? So let's go back to the top. You see these little icons here? This is an indicator that you are able to make a swap without negatively impacting your meal plan. So I actually already made a swap here. This is not one that I, was re I would recommend. This was just for informational purposes. Uh, every meal is going to have water inserted in the plan. So you're going to want to stick to that now. But if, let's say, one particular day, you're just not feeling water you could click on that swap option. You'll see that there are 18 other options that you can choose. You find something on the list that you like, click select, and the system automatically updates for you. You can do that same thing with anything within your meal plan. So I've already done that. Originally I had eggs here, decided to swap it out for cheese. Quick point, you'll notice that originally I had 100 calories all allocated here. Uh, but because I decided to replace it with cheddar cheese, the system is smart enough that it makes sure that I keep uh, my balance of nutrients in about the same range. So I'm slightly less calories, but you'll notice 
that the carbs, protein, and fat are about the same. If I ate more cheese, let's say I actually did eat 100 calories worth of cheese, then my macronutrients, my carbs, protein, and fat would be off. So each time we make a swap, the system is smart enough to adjust everything and give us the right uh, portion size so that we are still set up for success. Now let's say I played around here and then I changed my mind. Oh, I decided I don't want to do that anymore. I can easily click on this restore option and it will put back what I originally had. And I'm actually going to do that with the diet soda. I want my water back. So I just restore and everything is back like it was. So you can make these swaps with every item here um, in your meal plan. So that gives you a lot of flexibility, lots of flexibility. Couple of more notes here. And I mentioned this earlier, but I want to emphasize a few points, okay? So it's very, very important that you get the right mix of carbs, protein, and fat. Depending upon your plan, the percentages may look a little different from what you're seeing here. This is a balanced plan, so the carbs are at about 55% of calories per day, protein between 20 and 25, and the same for fat. Again, that may look a little bit different depending upon what plan that you're on. But I want, what I want you to take note of is the calories. So this calorie number here is calculated based on your age, height, weight, and goal. So it's very important that we stick to this calorie target as well as the balance of carbs, protein, and fat, okay? A couple of more things that I want to uh, make you aware of. We defaulted to day one. The system will always do that, but you can also check out days two, three, four, five, six, and seven. They will look a little bit different. So again, for those of you that really enjoy flexibility, this gives you a lot of different options. So you've got six meals a day, seven, seven different looks of that. So you literally have 42 different options baked into this meal plan. So you, if you take full advantage of it, you won't be in a situation where you get bored. Now, let's talk about that a little bit. Do you have to use all seven days? The answer is no, okay? So some people like myself, there are a few days that I really, really like. So I, I'm, I have a tendency to stick to, uh, you know, day one, four, and seven and use those over and over again because I don't get bored. There are also times where I may pull a meal from one day. Uh, say, for example, I might pull the breakfast from day three, but I might decide that I really, really like the lunch from day seven. I can do that. Here's why. Because each meal has about the same number of calories and the breakdown of carbs, protein, and fat is about the same. It's not perfect, but it's about the same. So as long as I follow the meal plan, I stay within my calorie ranges, I make the swaps so that I'm, I'm eating things that are in alignment with my plan, what I'm going to find is when I get to the bottom, my calories are about the same, okay? So it's okay to mix and match to give yourself more flexibility. After you've made all of the updates that you want to make to your plan, you've reviewed days one through seven, updated everything and it's just like you want it, you'll come to day seven and click save and continue. All right, so now that we finalized everything, we're ready to click this link, export to PDF. And here's what that's going to do. It's now going to give me a PDF version of my new and improved meal plan. And then I will have the option to print it out. And I'd suggest a few copies. Print out a copy for you to have at home in your kitchen, a copy to put in your desk at work, uh, and maybe even a copy for your car so that you can access it on the go. When you convert it to that PDF option, what's going to happen is now that you have everything at your fingertips, and this is what makes it easy for me when I'm in those modes and I want to kind of switch things around to pull one meal from day one and then pull another meal from day two because I can see all of those easily. If we scroll all the way through to the end of this document, a couple of things you're going to see. First, you'll see some recipes. So within each meal plan, there are normally a couple of new recipes for you to try. Uh, all the ones I have tried have been great. Really, really simple. You'll notice a very simple ingredient list. The instructions are normally pretty simple too. Uh, you know, just a few minutes of prep and cooking time and you're good to go. After you get past the recipes, 
you have this cool shopping list. So uh, make sure though that you have updated your meal plan so that it reflects the options that you really want before you export it to PDF. Otherwise your shopping list will be off, okay? But now you have a list of everything that you need to pick up from the store and you didn't have to write a paper list. Isn't that cool? All right, last in this document are a couple of tools to help you be successful when you're not at home and you don't have uh, your measuring cup or your scale. So if you're out and about and you need to make decisions on what to eat, here are some basic guidelines on the appropriate portion sizes. So uh, for a slice of bread, for example, or uh, an ounce of lunch meat, and generally you can have two to three ounces, it's about the size of a CD, all right? Cheese is about the size of three dice. So you can use these to uh, kind of decide the appropriate portion sizes at a glance because portion sizes are important. At the bottom of this document are some useful examples that help you understand what those things look like in terms of breads, um, fruits and vegetables, meats. So again, lots of helpful hit, hints here um, about how to set yourself up for success. So this may actually be uh, a page of the guide that you want to keep very, very handy so that you can gauge those appropriate portion sizes. One last thing I want to cover. There may be times where you're not going to be able to follow that meal plan. Now, I realize that this is going to happen. There are going to be times that you're on vacation, uh, other times that you are meeting up with friends and you're going out to eat. So what do you do in those instances? Well, I want to take you back to your meal plan because it gave us some guidelines. It said, hey, we need to be at about 1,500 calories per day. And it also gives us some info on carbs, protein, and fat. But I'll be honest, that was, those are very challenging to manage when you're eating out. So what I'd encourage you to do instead is try to stay within your calorie budget. So you'll notice in my plan, and it will be a little different for you, so make sure that you follow it based on your plan. Um, there are certain calorie um, targets here. So let's say I was going out to lunch. My lunches are normally around 300 calories. My snacks are normally around 200 calories. So if I was going out to lunch, I'd do something like go ahead and eat breakfast, skip my 10 a.m. snack, and combine the calories from my 10 a.m. snack with my 12 o'clock lunch. Now I have about 530 calories to work with. If I was going to have a really big lunch, above that 530 calories, then I can either move more to burn more calories and give myself more room, or maybe I cut back on the size of my breakfast a little bit or my evening snack. So the main goal here when I'm eating out is to do my best to still hit my daily calorie target. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at how we determine what my food options are. So I've decided I'm going to Cheesecake Factory. I've uh, put into the search engine Cheesecake Factory Nutrition. Normally it's just that simple. Um, and a site has been located that provides information on the Cheesecake Factory. So now I can scroll through this list, look at the serving sizes, look at the calorie content, and I'm looking for something in that 500 calorie range. But you can notice that, hey, <laughs> it's tough right now, right? Uh, but now I start getting to some salads. So I see a tomato and mozzarella salad that I could have. There's a tossed green salad that's about 200 calories, uh, a vegetable top, top, uh, chopped salad that's uh, one version is 200 with chicken, it's 390, so doing pretty good there. I definitely want to stay away from the pizza, because even though these are, are small pieces, they still add up pretty quickly. Even the lunch pizza, right? Lunch soup and salad would be a good option. Half chicken salad sandwich would be a good option. So you get the gist. So we just scroll through this list looking for something that's went within our calorie budget. And remember, if I go over a little bit, no sweat, just move a little bit more or make adjustments to the other meals so that I still am setting myself up for success. I hope this helps as you get comfortable with your meal plan. If you run into any questions, remember that I am just an email, text, or phone call away. That's it for today. God bless.